to the apostle. Uh, so uh, God bless you uh, this morning. Uh, we, we are grateful so much uh, once again. Um, and indeed, we are all uh, greeted. We would love to greet all the saints and to also appreciate our program director for today, Apostle um, Dumisani Mpanansi from uh, the Kingdom of Eswatini. Thank you so much for, for the opening. Um, we greet all the uh, uh, people representing different uh, domains and different uh, mountains of God's deployment and fields of uh, custodianship. God bless you uh, so much. We also want to really recognize our different prayer clusters in the area of prayer, for example. Uh, we have a cluster dealing with prayer for each of our three major clusters in World Economic Congress clusters of uh, this mandate. Cluster A is, uh, deals with reconstruction. So that's the cluster that deals with um, economic reconstruction uh, pillar, and then also the Africa reconstruction pillar, and then the uh, spiritual reconstruction pillar. Uh, all these uh, pillars, they are really worldwide because economic reconstruction uh, is uh, uh, from the rising of the sun uh, to the uh, to the to the end uh, of it, and then it also really goes from uh, from east to west, north to south. Uh, the Africa reconstruction pillar it is also worldwide because Africa there is continental Africa with fifty four countries. Then there is um, uh, people that really worldwide, the African diaspora worldwide, it's located, they are located in every nation under the sun, including, uh, including even in Ukraine, uh, including even in Ukraine. I was reading yesterday um, uh, from a journalist, a French journalist who came out of Ukraine um, and he was speaking on a French radio station and he was indicating how uh, the mainstream media does not tell us the full story of what is happening. And uh, he was saying um, there are people inside of, uh, I mean, quite lots of them, including in the Ukrainian army uh, that are still wearing the swastika symbols of the Nazi. And you hear them speaking openly and clearly and saying, uh, if they would find a Jewish person or a black person, they would skin that person alive. There is such serious uh, discrimination and racism. That is why in the list of um, um, victims of war uh, in Ukraine that you see, you never see reports of uh, uh, what is happening to uh, over, over, over 20, 30,000 African students and uh, um, and people of color, non non um, yeah, uh, indigenous Ukrainians that are stuck uh, in that war, and uh, how they are suffering and how they are not allowed to use uh, public transport to escape from the war, and how they are further not allowed to find refuge in the different uh, jurisdictions of uh, Western Europe and other parts of Europe when they escape from the war. So the issues of Africa reconstruction, they are not uh, fictitious. They are not uh, a figmentation. Uh, they should have been a program and a solution actually, um, even at the level of uh, uh, Africa itself or African Union. Uh, to say, what shall we do concerning our citizens? I know that there are some few countries that took uh, um, uh, bilateral, you know, um, uh, bilateral arrangements or unilateral arrangements to rescue their uh, citizens. But there are so many others that uh, did not have that capacity to do so. They didn't even have embassies 
uh, in the in the Ukraine, and so there are so many people that have died unnoticed, buried in unmarked graves, not recorded by any journalist because no journalist was interested. And then you also have a scenario where, uh, even on public media, uh, some journalists have been actually they have been heard speaking publicly, and this is public record, something which even the media had to later on uh, uh, try to apologize, uh, really remarking some horrible remarks to say they can't believe this war, they can't believe to see um, to see Caucasians uh, uh, dying. Uh, they say this is now a different story. It's not like in Syria, this is not like uh, in North Africa, this is not like uh, um, you know somewhere else, the typical Africa. So this is why you find the publicity that has been given to the Ukraine war. Um, it's uh, as if all other wars have stopped in every part of the world. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and uh, many other uh, uh, indicators of racism. So racism is still alive. So um, you are um, regarded uh, on site in, in the United States of America as recently as yesterday, uh, you know, a racially instigated a killing uh, took place in uh, one of the states. And uh, I checked on BBC, the way they recorded about, they reported about that, it was like uh, uh, seven seconds, uh, you know, it, 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 it just flashed out of the space. And immediately after that, they are going to look for uh, some 15 minutes to tell you about uh, somewhere else. Uh, so Africa reconstruction, uh, it's very, very important in the heart of God. In the interest of justice, uh, righteousness, and, and, and the truth, um, that is why in 2017, God gave us to have uh, that subject as one of the main pillars. Because in the end times, God is doing also re restoration of all things, um, such as we find Peter preaching in Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 3, verses 19 to 21, he speaks of uh, times of refreshing that uh, God will send from His presence, um, you know, in the, in the you know, uh, so that there would be a restoration of all things, um, and then the fullness uh, of uh, um, the reunification of Christ with His people, and the full reign of God. Uh, uh, through Christ and through his people would be consummated um, a new earth and a new heaven uh, into eternity. So um, these are issues of justice. These are issues of uh, righteousness. These are issues of uh, the mind of God having to come into, uh, into, into dominion uh, right here into the earth. So Africa reconstruction is not just for some, um, you know, Cape to Cairo kind of uh, uh, venture and adventure, but it's really uh, a worldwide. There are also some non-African, non-persons uh, of non-African descent that are equally concerned and equally, in fact, the first, gen the, well, the, the first, um, uh, uh, the first uh, uh, video clip reporter who was outraged about the uh, the persecution of uh, um, um, you know black people and uh, people of uh, non Caucasian race, including Indians, on the borders of Poland. That person was Polish. He was Caucasian. He was Polish in Poland, but the man couldn't accept, he couldn't swallow the discrimination that he saw at the borders when he saw young people uh, that had walked uh, for a distance of two days. They spent two days walking in the freezing freezer of um, uh, the, the, the cold uh, to come to the Polish border to escape war. They were coming from, there were university students that had fled the war. Um, 
and they came for refuge. They were denied public transport, um, not even a compassionate private lifts. And they came to the border. And when they were at the border there, um, then they were told to go back where they came from because the refuge there in Poland, it was said by the immigration and the screening officials at the border, they were told, this is not for you. This is for Ukrainians. So um, that is why in 2017, in the month of June, God gave us uh, to say World Economic Congress must adopt this as one of the key pillars because in Zechariah 1, verses 11, 12, God says, uh, the angel of the Lord raises up a, 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 a protestation a voice to say, how long, O Lord, shall we not have mercy on, the, on these people of Africa uh, that have been lying desolate for all these 400 years since 1619, when the first boat landed with the slaves uh, that had the uh, these were just a few survivors, about 20 out of about 50 that had been uh, uh, snatched from the continent and they landed on the off the shores of Virginia uh, in the United States. And then the first slave auction took place there. Um, so these are things that have not yet been fully um, uh, uh, addressed. Uh, of course, I applaud a lot of efforts conventions, treaties, and whatever covenants that have been since done. But uh, this is the, you know, it, it is something that has to manifest structurally, um, institutionally, culturally, economically, politically, uh, and uh, even also militarily. So these are issues. We still have problems, even where peacekeepers of the United Nations um, remuneration, sometimes there was controversy where remuneration was to be based on the color of your skin. Uh, and, and so uh, people that love God and people that dare to care to know who God is, they cannot sit and uh, watch uh, and, and say nothing about it for that would be, that would be injustice. Uh, so that is uh, where and why um, the the Lord uh, the Lord uh, 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 the Lord really granted us to also deal with this manner and to deal with this subject. Uh, there must be uh, there must be justice. The cry for justice uh, is very very loud. Uh, it's very, very loud in the, each time there is a true revival, each time there's a true restoration uh, and a true um, reconstruction, you cannot ignore justice. You cannot ignore righteousness. Um, that is why the church cannot, we cannot bury our uh, heads comfortably uh, under the sand and we ignore economic justice or injustice uh, neither can we ignore the uh, social injustices uh, in the areas of uh, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, uh, education, technology, food and uh, um, land, um, and all these issues of housing, shelter, and anything and everything that you can, you can talk about. So that's very important. Our other cluster, obviously, which is uh, um, our other pillar in the reconstruction cluster, which is uh, spiritual reconstruction, that has to be headed by the church, because the church is uh, primarily, it's God's primary agency through, that's his household, and, and that's where God must start from. That's where even the scripture says judgment even begins in the house of God, because that's where the standard is to be shown and carried and so forth. So, um, therefore, all these ills and ilks that we are trying to address across the African landscape and across the economic landscape in the whole world, God then um, begins to say, who uh, shall I send and who shall go for us? 
then there's got to be custodians. There's got to be the Isaiahs uh, that will stand up and say, here am I, send me. Um, and uh, these are also the people that all creation, all creation being suffocated in the economic uh, arena and all creation uh, that are being suffocated um, in the area of racism and uh, discrimination, they are also crying. They will also cry and they'll say, uh, uh, where are the sons of God? They are looking for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's why we also deal with the, um, uh, spiritual reconstruction headed up uh, by the church because the sons of God must arise they, across all the world, across all the world. There are some countries where um, church and the scripture and Bible was presented from a racist fashion and uh, God was presented as just a God of a certain class and a certain uh, a color of skin uh, and, and, and so forth. So we then have to do reconstruction and bring back the unneutralized uh, and un, uh, uncompromised uh, uh, mind of God and spirit of God. That is why spiritual reconstruction is a worldwide uh, assignment as well, uh, because that's part of restoration of all things. Uh, that's part of uh, what we must uh, do. I want to applaud and I want to um, appreciate the, other, uh, the others that are deployed or shall be deployed or are called by God to be deployed again in the other cluster, a second cluster with three pillars as well in World Economic Congress, which is namely um, the wealth creation cluster, um, the wealth creation cluster. Uh, the Lord opened my eyes years ago. Um, he opened my eyes. He took me around the world, uh, every continent almost, um, uh, having uh, ministered and uh, served not only in the government, but also in the uh, non-governmental uh, development sectors, and then consulting, and then um, uh, doing all that. But when he put me on the platform of uh, uh, the church, um, then having served in my country, having served in my region of Southern Africa, having served uh, in Africa, he then took me on a whirlwind, whirlwind tour of the whole world, um, 20, uh, 2016, from 2016, the beginning of it, uh, to the end of 2015, 10 very intensive and very extensive years. I, I, I had to change my passports, not because the passport is finished, but because the pages of the passport are full uh, with immigration stamps in different, I remember the other time when I was getting into the country of uh, the island of uh, Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean, uh, I, I, you know, I had to search before I got to the immigration point, I had to search for, uh, look for a, a place to show the immigration officer for them to put a stamp because it was just uh, likely that I would be told that, you, you know, we, you, we have nowhere to stamp in your passport. So I had to help them to see some small uh, spaces and slots to stamp there because there was no time even to apply for another passport and then to get another new one. It was, it was a speedy. God had showed me, uh, when he sent me, he showed me, he sent a man four o'clock in the morning. A man came with a horse and this horse stood in front of me. And then he said uh, words that God had uh, uh, sent me and he was sending me and he, told me details and then from there he took this horse and then he took me and uh, you know caused me to ally to 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 uh, to uh, uh, ascend and and sit on this horse then he said this is your transport he showed me some uh, weapons of warfare um, for this battle and for this war um, they were packed there, supersonic Concord Air Force fighters. They were ready for war. 
I know that this mandate is not a, it's not a, it's not a boogie show. It is a war to redress these issues, to fix these issues. We deal with beasts of all kinds and of all natures. And then he um, he then says uh, he came back to the back of this horse and then he slept it so that it could start to run. This horse ran through nations like nobody's business. And this horse, um, I saw transformation. I saw uh, transformation of religion. I saw transformation of uh, uh, governments, economies, and I saw transformation of uh, social sectors and, uh, and so many things were being turned upside down and the highway of the Lord uh, was being brought into, into position. But I saw the end of this thing. Uh, I saw the end of this thing connecting into the eternal kingdom. Uh, I, I saw multitudes from nations, from uh, different languages, from different racial groups, they were connected and there were leaders and there were, there were, there were leaders from different uh, uh, spaces and constituencies and domains. And I know exactly, I know exactly how this thing plays out with the Messiah and with his kingdom and uh, how this thing cannot and should not and shall not be compromised. Um, so, uh, wealth creation, wealth creation cluster uh, must shift uh, and must bring justice and righteousness in terms of uh, uh, both the activation of production, productivity, investment, economic inheritance, and economic means. There is a way in which economic and uh, logistical resources, when they are denied a people, uh, it means the foundations have been tempered with, the foundations of the dignity and honor and dominion uh, that God gave to such a person. It means those foundations have been cracked and manipulated. It therefore means that person, their ability uh, to do the will of God becomes, you know, uh, becomes compromised. Um, they are, they, they, a system uh, has been built around them to permanently trap them into, um, into uh, crime and into uh, uh, disobedience and into uh, cursing God and into iniquities subsequently. So communities that are unnecessarily plunged into poverty, and into lack and into hunger and the filth and squalor, they end up uh, uh, becoming the habitation of demons and the habitation of evil and uh, 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 social injustices um, by way of uh, um, like almost a, a sentence or, or, or a prison sentence. They are sentenced to, to squalor and the sentenced to sin and the sentenced to iniquity. And so that is an injustice. You know. So when we do economic uh, reconstruction, when we do well, the economic reconstruction itself, what God showed me was that it's not enough to talk about it. Uh, he took me around the world for eight years out of the 10 years from uh, January 2000 and uh, um, and and two thousand and 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 six to uh, the 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 end of twenty fifteen, which was ten years. Eight of those ten years, uh, he took me around different uh, churches and different Christian uh, um, environments, um, media stations, and and uh, academic institutions, uh, all over. But the last two of those 10 years, he summarily took me um, to be at the helm of leadership together with, I mean, alongside five other worldwide and global uh, Christian business uh, you know, associations and networks. So I was, I was involved with five of them. And this was just an act of God. They were just sovereignly calling me in and, and I was there. And then God opened my eyes. He says, do you see what is happening? Do you see what is happening here? P 
people are gathering in the name of business. They are gathering in the name of, uh, uh, you know, Christian business. But in reality, there is no wealth being created. Uh, it's 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 a business. Uh, uh, you know, it's a spiritual clubs of business people. But there is no wealth being created. There is no righteousness and justice being enforced either in the church or in the land. And then he showed me, he said, do you see, there is no, uh, there are no strategic resources being generated. No logistics are being generated or distributed to advance the kingdom of God. We are not called by God. World Economic Congress is not called by God uh, to simply gloss over uh, injustices and the gloss of no, we have got to have programs and projects that turn the wealth uh, over into the domain of righteousness, turn the resources, turn the logistics practically. That's why there must be businesses, there must be uh, opportunities, there must be wealth, there must be real, um, tangible, tangible, tangible. Uh, uh, corporations that must be either raised or uh, discipled uh, to get uh, the, the, the righteous culture to come into every sector of the economy. There must be tangible businesses and at the same time, important things like the true gospel, the gospel of Christ and his kingdom, these things must be funded strategically. And when they are funded, they can, the funding of the gospel cannot be left to uh, uh, you know, some trinkets and uh, crumbs and uh, leftovers of uh, 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 tithe, you know, you know, tithes and offerings. Uh, when you talk of tithe, this is 10%. Where is the 90%? And, 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 and what is it? Uh, you know, financing. There is a way in which the tithe, while it is a principle of God, but it has become, it has been used as a scapegoat. It has been used as a, a, a sanitization. You know, you know what they've been doing in sanitization. They want to sanitize hands and fingers, but their hearts are dirty. They want to sanitize, uh, you know, fingers and hands but their mouths are dirty. They don't sanitize the mouth. They don't sanitize the heart. They don't sanitize the mind. Uh, everything is filth and uh, it's, it's totally uh, unacceptable. So the tithe has been used to sanitize, to sanitize dirty people, filthy people, who, and when they come from the tithe, uh, 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 the, 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 the bowel and, and, and the place of the tithe, they don't care what they do with 90%. They don't care whether the 90% is going to finance idolatry. It's going to be, we are going to be buying uh, from uh, places that sponsor wickedness. We are going to be buying and sponsoring institutions that sponsor racism. Uh, we are going to be buying and sustaining institutions that, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and companies and products and services that sponsor the killing of children. Some of them, they sponsor uh, uh, um, intentional, deliberate, wanton abortion on demand. We don't care what we do with the rest of the 90%. So the commitment is... Uh, creation of wealth, but it's not just ordinary wealth, it's wealth as part of a kingdom economy. It's an economy of righteousness. So that's why when we get into business, if we get into agriculture, if we get into any form of business, we also want to know what kind of uh, produce is going to come out of this agriculture and how is it produced? Is it not uh, farming in a way which is going to destroy um, the livelihoods of people and the land and the environment, and it's going to mortgage the poor at the uh, mercy of the wicked uh, and at the mercy of cartels forever and ever. Um, so we are concerned about these things, and we are also concerned about where the profits shall go. We are concerned about how the workers in there are treated. These are 
people formed in the image and the likeness of God? Are they going to have dignity? The workplace, is it going to be a place where if somebody comes there, they will feel that I am really part of Zion, even if they don't confess Christ, even if they don't confess God, but um, let them ask and say, why is this place so good? Why is it so liberating? Our restaurants, um, our, our, our hotels, our, our eating uh, uh, food courts and, and things like that. We can't be feeding people with cancer and, and with cancerous and cancer producing and cancer in, in inducing uh, in, 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 in foods and things like that. So uh, all our, our textile industries, our manufacturing, you know, uh, is places of manufacturing, our clothing, you know, enterprises, our, 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 our hospitals and medical outlets must be a, a, a totally different from the ordinary and the common. So we have a mission to deal with the, you know, all these things. We have so many hospitals that are called the mission hospitals or church, uh, church run, church owned hospitals and, and clinics and whatever. Uh, in the beginning, you know, you, 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 if you go back to find out why was that hospital established, who established it, what was in the heart of that person, you will find that what is happening today is different from what was meant in the beginning by the Spirit of the Lord when they uh, gave a burden to that particular priest or pastor or bishop or church to establish that hospital. The thing since it got infiltrated, captured and then uh, controlled by systems that are captured. So we also have to do reconstruction. That's why we also, in our uh, social, um, uh, you know, social uh, investments and social reconstruction within Africa reconstruction and within uh, all the spaces where we work, we also have to engage Christian related and uh, faith-related institutions so that we can be true to the original calling because in the beginning it was not so. Um, hospitals were supposed to be a place of uh, healing, a place of recovery. Uh, even if your loved one still came into that hospital and died, but people, even when they die, they must die with dignity and they must be uh, interred with dignity and their families must recover with dignity. So uh, the cluster that deals with wealth creation, it then handles the issues of uh, investment, uh, which we are deliberate about. There are people in the churches, uh, the, you know, the, whose, whose unemployment, whose poverty, whose limitations cannot go uh, by faith alone, by prayer alone, but Jesus says this kind does not go except by. So there are other kinds of economic uh, uh, impoverishments and stagnations that cannot go except by deliberate, proactive, and intentional and structured investments. Um, the, then some of the poverty will go, some of the limitations will go, we must create wealth. So God showed me and said, no, you can't gloss over. World Economic Congress cannot be a spiritual club of, 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 of Christian business people. Neither can it be a, a, a club of um, uh, uh, you know, Christians who love business, who love economy, but they produce nothing, they do nothing about it bringing about uh, the creation of wealth. So that's why uh, in our programs, we do these things and uh, we then move from um, investment facilitation, investment coordination, investment promotion, investment deployment. We go further to deploy uh, entities and, uh, and businesses, some of them uh, joint venture, collaborative, uh, uh, models and, uh, and, and, and corporations of business. So that is why in our churches, some of us and some of you that are pastors and that are shepherds over people, that are uh, custodians over groupings of people, we are calling and we do require that the same message that we are speaking, as you take it to your people, as you share it with your people, as you see amongst your people, there are some others that 
must play an active and direct part in the creation of a righteous uh, wealth, a righteous economy uh, through business. And we also need those people to connect to this word. This is not just for us and for you, but this must go down. The Bible says your children shall be taught, your children and your children's children shall be taught of the Lord. So those people that are being taught of the Lord, we want to see them activated and uh, we want to see them now being the custodians of the businesses that we are creating. Uh, many of the times in the area of investment, we end up fighting and battling with the real jackals and beasts and, uh, uh, and vampires because we are dealing uh, we, you know, with a sector and a, a, a domain where if the wealth, eh, if the wealth is now being transferred from uh, the uh, uh, oppressive taskmasters, oppressive Egyptians, the, this thing is now coming to the former slaves. This thing is now coming to the uh, Israelites so that they can build righteousness. They can now establish a holy nation. Now you have to um, then delegate and assign the responsibility to um, the people that have been redeemed, the people that understand what God wants to do. You then cannot 100% or predominantly rely on the very same taskmasters. So this is one of the problems that we must resolve in World Economic Congress because the righteous uh, who have callings and who have uh, talents and who have uh, uh, the custodianship to operationalize business. Uh, I'm looking for them. I'm looking for where is Stephen? Where is Philip? Where, where are those seven deacons that were identified when God broke through in Jerusalem and when God was now eliminating unemployment, eliminating lack and poverty? in Jerusalem through the church. Where are those types of uh, you know, deacons? Where are those types of uh, people that could administer business so that uh, you know, the, the, the apostles could continue rolling out uh, the word of God and uh, making sure that strategic releases and prayers are being done. The blueprint is not uh, compromised and suffocated. So we need these people to uh, to be identified, and we need them to be called. We need them to come into place. Um, we have, uh, you know, in some cases, uh, you know, doors and doorways where God is opening people, um, you know, and opening the space to lead, literally establish uh, major institutions. I'm talking of banks. I'm talking of uh, uh, regional uh, agricultural corporations. I'm talking of major mining uh, uh, opportunities and, 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 and mining industry opportunities, uh, you know, new factories that must be created. But we need a reserve of righteous people. Obviously, some of them will be trained. Eh? They'll be trained. Abraham had to produce 318 trained in his own household. But there are also others that uh, have already been trained. When Solomon was building the economy and building the temple, there were others that had already been trained out there. The stones that built the temple, they were not manufactured right at the construction site. They were manufactured elsewhere and brought into feet where they belong. So we have come to that time. We've come to that time. I want to encourage you because this uh, weekend, um, uh, as a matter of fact, on, 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 on Friday, Saturday, this week, we are rolling out and unveiling the international digital uh, and online platform of World Economic Congress. And uh, people will be fitting into spaces where they must fit and uh, training will be happening online, media issues will be happening online. Um, uh, connecting of people to investments will be happening online. Investment is, should not be an elitist uh, idea and the process. Investment, uh, uh, every man must uh, be able to sit under his own fig tree, uh, male and female, 
uh, everyone should be able to sit under his own vine, under their, they must have inheritance. God did not create and form people just to watch and whatever. Um, so even ordinary people, when they must be activated and they must become uh, engaged in these particular, uh, uh, you know, operations and uh, recovery initiatives. When we talk of major projects like Africa Reconstruction Bank, we're not talking of an elitist project. We are not talking about three, two fellows um, hijacking, uh, uh, you know, treasures and, uh, and treasuries and uh, storehouses for the whole continent and for the whole body of Christ. We're not talking about that. There must be room where uh, churches must uh, participate uh, up to the level of also serving as shareholders and um, uh, uh, the, 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 the youth must be organized and uh, they, they must have an inheritance um, out of the economy that God is providing in every place uh, across Africa and in the, in the rest of the world. The women must have inheritance. The daughters of Zelophead, five of them, they pitched up before Moses and you know and they got their inheritance they pitched up later when the uh, land was being distributed in the land of Canaan before Joshua and before Eliza the priest and they were given their inheritance so these are very very practical issues that we'll be dealing with um, and so on we must account for uh, resources and stocks and wealth located in uh, different jurisdictions and so that when the Russians are going to do business in Mozambique, or you are going to do business in the island uh, or, or the ocean country of uh, Singapore, uh, or you are going into uh, Vietnam, you must be knowing who are the other Russians people there and people must interconnect and intertrade and become the salt and the light and begin to produce godly testimonies. So that's why we 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 we, we do this, and we inter network, we, you know, with business fellowships and business associations, both inside the church and outside of the church. Some of them will not have to be core members of World Economic Congress. They can be affiliates. They can be strategic partners, as long as they are wanting to collaborate. They can be Cyruses. We inter-network and interlink with governments uh, at all levels, uh, the, the, the executive of government, the legislatures of government. We, we, we also want to bring the judiciary to a place of exposure because judges must not just sit there and enforce wicked laws. They must also make calls for justice and they must through statute law um, they must also, and case law, they must also be able to introduce righteousness, and uh, they must also be able to cause the legislature uh, and the legislators to review and to repeal some of the uh, impoverishment laws that uh, uh, countries were dumped with and uh, things were dumped into their hands. So we, we interface with all these uh, uh, groupings and sectors, international organizations and international bodies. Some of them have outlived um, their purpose and, and they need to be either disbanded or uh, realigned completely. And we have to be dealing with these issues. And, uh, and uh, so, that, uh, right. so that is why in World Economic Congress, we also do have and you'll be seeing it soon during these 70 days and beyond. We also have launches, uh, virtual launches, where we have to have conversations. We have to have think tanks discussing the reconstruction, the rethinking, and the redesign of certain things that are being taken for granted. There are certain issues happening in all different countries and regions that nobody, um, nobody, there's a question, but uh, that's where exactly uh, Amos would come in. That's where uh, Daniel would come in. That's where uh, uh, see Moses would come in and say, let my people go. And, and that is where exactly where Solomon would come in and say, let's bring justice here. And that is exactly where 
um, ordinary women, uh, the, 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 the widow uh, at Shunem would come in and begin to say, but where is my land? Where is shelter? Where is housing for my son? And things like that. So we will be activating those forums and uh, lounges of discussion and conversation. And we'll be doing some of it online. Some of it will be happening in our country chapters. And so our country chapters, these are glorious uh, places uh, of uh, local level connectivity and, and implementation of everything that we are talking about. So these things will properly become ordered. Uh, to me, the issues of technology, usage of technology, is very, very critical. 2015, September in 2015, uh, God sent a, 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 this man who came. I had just come out of the country of Kenya, and I, I landed in Harare before I could sleep. This man came, presented to me a chronometer and a cell phone, and says, these are tools that uh, you know, have been given to you. You must use them. I did not know that there was going to be a lockdown and a shutdown that was going to require usage of technology in order for the vision to go ahead. I only, it was only when these things were now before us and everyone was forced to go online and everyone was forced, forced to go technology then he opened the eyes of my understanding. You say, okay, this is why you were given the chronometer, you were given the cell phone, um, you, you know, to communicate online, to get things done online. So we can't wait for uh, we can't wait for manufacturers and distributors of COVID and the spreaders of COVID to stop that wickedness, and then you start now reconstruction. We have to stop um, wickedness by advancing righteousness, and then we get uh, wickedness to become weaker and weaker, and the house of David to become stronger and stronger. So online activities and online uh, training, we have got, sometimes we have not only, we don't have to only encourage our people, but we have to create the resources and to, to create access. Uh, so that is why some of our businesses and some of our projects that are in the pipeline, it's exactly to do that. Um, um, uh, software developers, hardware developers, they have to get busy from the house of God and find solutions. Because I always say to people, if COVID had come in the days of Daniel Shadrach, Michigan, and Abid Nigo, um, all the days of Esther and Mordecai and so on and so on. Uh, these guys would not have taken these things sleeping and lying uh, in the ground. They would have come out guns blazing and they would have come out with a model of the kingdom of God. How do we handle this thing uh, God's way? And that way would have uh, liberated the world. I remember at the height of the uh, the level five lockdowns uh, in the first two months. I remember in one country, one of our, uh, you know, countries where there is uh, one of our country chapters. I remember, I remember calling for a meeting, um, a meeting of our country chapter online to say, hey, these are threats coming and there's a special conspiracy against that country. Let's deal with this thing. Um, we want the Josephs to come. We want the, jo the, the Josephs in medicine and health to come. We want the Daniels to come. We want everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord to come. Let's look into this thing. Yes, thank God. Uh, we bless the Lord for everybody else who is talking. But we want to hear the wisdom of God, the answers of God, the solutions of God. And we must be able to be decidedly clear. Uh, to say what is the time. We want to understand the times and we want to know what Israel ought to do. And somebody uh, uh, um, uh, uh, hysterically uh, you know, opposed the meeting, um, simply saying, no, no, um, we, we were in a prayer meeting and, uh, and uh, uh, he's making claims to say, God said, there will be no COVID in this country. And, and people are dying and you are saying there's no COVID in this country. You are burying the head in the sand. 
uh, this kind, sometimes there are certain kinds that don't go by burying the head in the sand. There are certain kinds that require practical solutions. People needed to change their diet. People needed to grow certain foods and uh, certain particular solutions that can mitigate, that can prevent, that can slow down the onset of uh, full-blown uh, um, respiratory uh, arrest you know, amongst the victims and so forth. And these are things that God has given us abundantly in Africa, especially. We were supposed to actually save the world. Even up to now, there must have been and there should subsequently be researches uh, and the sharing of information with the rest of the world to say, why did some of the rural people uh, not do social distancing, but they never caught COVID, COVID never caught them, and their life is going on, what were they eating, what is their diet made up of? Those indigenous knowledge, solutions and systems are supposed to be distributed out there. But these are things that uh, or the, the mainstream uh, organizations and mainstream bodies that are uh, sponsored by the same people that have captured the healthcare, pharmaceutical and medical industry. They are not interested in losing their monopoly and grip. So these are issues that uh, uh, those with the, a mandate and mission and concern of righteousness have got to have programs getting into those communities, getting into those spaces and uh, making sure that we disseminate, we, we, we discover what God has given us and we disseminate these things. So wealth creation, our wealth creation is, is motivated by uh, uh, both a spiritual, a moral and a social cause and purpose that must be achieved. So we do business uh, in order to enforce righteousness. We do investment to enforce righteousness. We um, structure treasures and treasuries uh, in order to enforce righteousness. We People come into membership of World Economic Congress because we have to enforce righteousness. They that shall be of you, Isaiah 58 verse 12, they shall build ancient ruins. You shall raise foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairers of the bridge and the restorers of paths to dwell in. Uh, we do these things. They, that, that is why our third uh, cluster, which is uh, the corporate uh, uh, empowerment cluster, which then houses uh, the desk and office of the WEC president, as well as uh, all the strategic, corporate strategic uh, units and the departments, uh, including our diplomacy unit, our standards, uh, monitoring, coordination unit, uh, our risk control and risk management unit, our planning, uh, uh, you know, monitoring uh, and evaluation unit, uh, our um, uh, training department, training and capacity building, the membership, uh, our, our, our media and communications, uh, our operations and administration, uh, all these things are also housed in that cl cluster and all our management when it comes to central coordination, it's then control. It's, it's then coordinated from the, uh, that particular cluster as well. So we are um, at this point. Um, this particular, uh, this particular, you know, uh, morning, this particular morning and, and session, this particular morning end session was simply was simply. Uh, was simply turned by God into, into a, 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 a bridging kind of a session because now we need to say when we are talking about Jehoshaphat, uh, the reconstruction model, when we are talking about David, uh, the reconstruction blueprints, when we are talking about the blueprints that Solomon used, the blueprint that even our master, master blueprint maker, Jesus Christ, the blueprints that the apostles used to bring about the reconstruction of the Gentile world. Um, and when we are talking about these things, we must be talking them, but at the same time, 
uh, relating them into the practice and the practical side of everything that is being taught. So we must have times whereby we talk structure, we, we talk uh, uh, infrastructure, and we also talk uh, channels and we talk platforms and we talk how to and where to and when to, uh, so that when we have spoken what needs to be done, we then have to take it further down to say, how do we do it? And where do we do it? And, uh, and, and how do we group the people? And uh, uh, who does it? And who is called for where? Um, there are so many people with great callings um, on this platform and, uh, and on, on Facebook. And there are so many other people that have great callings that are going to hear this via YouTube and podcasts and whatever. And there are many others that are going to hear through those that have had, but how can they uh, run? Uh, how can they run except the thing is clearly written and enunciated on tablets of stone? And I know that I was talking these things um, uh, verbally. I was talking them uh, verbally, but uh, they, there comes a time you know, during these 70 days as part of the preparation for reconstruction we will be also sharing some of the literature. Some, some of it you will find it online. You, you will be able to find it online uh, through uh, documents that you can download is from our digital platform. Some of it will be found through videos that one can download or at least stream and, and, and just listen and through audios that you can access and so forth. A lot of our people that, you know, uh, in addition to WhatsApp groups, we have so many WhatsApp groups, um, but in addition to them, there are also going to be online groups and uh, our country chapters will be functioning online and, and, and people will be knowing, okay, if I'm in this country, uh, there is an online you know, platform and gathering for this. Uh, if I'm praying for this, there's an online platform where I can connect for this. Uh, if I am to participate in investments mobilization, uh, there is an online platform where I can do this. If I want to access and find out what projects are on the table for me to connect and become a co-owner and co-shareholder, what uh, login place can I go? We are taking, or if I need training, or if I I I, I feel I have a calling in this area and uh, I, I need to be um, uh, heard and I need to be deployed. This is where I can go. So we are simplifying all these things uh, and we are working on the sidelines up, uh, you know, outside of these two hours per day of sessions. There are also a lot of work groups and uh, preparation groups that are also at work and make sure that all these things uh, are happening. So this morning, we would like to uh, close by just opening uh, and muting ourselves and just really uh, come to a place of prayer um, to say, yeah, this is our time. And uh, this time, which time God has caused us to exist. Um, when it has been said and done, David uh, served his generation by the will of God. And then after that, yeah, he fell asleep. We must pray for the finishing grace. We must pray for the finishing anointing and the finishing uh, 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 resilience and the sustainability. Every piece must come together. Uh, this requires prayer. This requires also training. This requires activation. I want to close by saying to us, um, so far, when we started, because we started from uh, the altar, I'm talking about these 70 days, we started from intense prayer, uh, you know, at the altar, and that is powerful, and that must continue. Prayer, relationship building with God must never stop. Uh, but equally so, we are also looking forward to times now when uh, the different implementation uh, tracks and the implementation uh, craftsmen and craftswomen, they need to be able to take the same word and uh, translate it now into uh, um, a, you know, templates and blueprints for implementing the practical reality of what we are dealing with. 
So I'm expecting to see, even in our WhatsApp groups initially, I'm expecting to see different other gifts and different other areas of uh, cust custodians also creating messages, creating postings that can activate and guide the people in the area of compliance and obedience and implementation. Uh, so that the same way that we are seeing prayer leadership posting about prayer and calling for prayer, we must also see uh, those that must format uh, business uh, groupings. We, we want to see them posting. We want to see them taking from the same call, the same template, the same word, and also interpreting that word into execution and implementation. We want to see those that are called to uh, be singers for uh, this reconstruction. We want to see them also uh, becoming activated uh, producing the songs and, and beginning to say, hey, we singers, let us gather. We want to see those that are champions in investment uh, uh, structuring and investment mobilization. We want to see them emerging and beginning to say, men and brethren, what shall we also do? And so forth and so forth. That is why testimony time is very encouraging when we start to hear through testimonies, report backs, because others are being released into uh, peace building in communities. Others are being re you know, released into uh, youth training and, and so forth and so on. So the same word will produce a thousand fruits uh, in different directions because this is who our God is. So we want to see a broad and cross-cutting activation um, and participation beginning to build up. So let's just unmute ourselves and just pray, uh, activating this thing and, and, and proclaiming it over the landscape. And then this evening, we'll be able to continue with this reconstruction model that uh, turned around the kingdom of Judah under Jehoshaphat. Let's unmute ourselves this morning. Father, we thank you uh, this morning we're giving yes. you all the praise. We're giving you all the glory um, in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we are saying you are mighty. You are majestic, uh, Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we will give you honor. We will give you praise. We will, yes, we will, yes, we give you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. You are seated upon the throne, Lord God Almighty, in your table. Uh, we lack nothing, and in your territory, we lack nothing. Uh, in your, in your space, there is abundance. There is no lack of anything. Uh, thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, there is no leg, there is no leg, and there will be no leg. Uh, so thank you, Father, as you activate your people, as you activate your people, uh, as you activate your people, and as your people turn the race, they shall not be weary, they shall not lack strength, they shall not lack energy, they shall not lack ability, they shall not lack uh, grace of. Father God, we are just thanking you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. We are glorifying your name. Yes, Lord God Almighty. We are glorifying your name. You are Lord and you are God and you are seated. Now let your people come and you reign and reign and reign uh, forever and ever and ever ever and ever and ever uh, in Jesus mighty name hallelujah thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah yes so uh, so we are grateful uh, uh, we are grateful and thankful to the Lord this morning, uh, just so that we, he has granted and he has permitted us to, uh, to be able to start um, to release the charge and to start opening uh, the, the contents and the inside of this fruit. Um, yes, uh, churches, 
uh, we must make this, I mean, in World Economic Congress, we must make this blueprint plain upon tablets of stone so that churches can connect, they can obtain, they can implement, prayer movements can, can connect, they can obtain, they can implement, uh, industries and industry associations, governments can all see blueprints, they can also borrow, they can also connect. Some of our people will go and train and so on and so on. That is why in World Economic Congress, we will be, we, we do have, and we will increase, we will continue to have core members, which is the Isaiah 58 verse 12, uh, uh, mainstream category of people, but we have many others, uh, organizations and countries, governments, uh, cities and uh, associations and churches and ministries that will connect. Some of them will simply connect as affiliates. They come and uh, they come to the world, they get what they need, they go and implement. Um, they may report back, they may not report back, they may come to say thank you, they may come to give testimonies, others may never come back, uh, but uh, they ought to be the core that really, you see, those that know we were called to carry this thing and we are shouldering it and it will come to pass and it will happen. So um, God bless you. And then there will be others that will just come in as strategic partners Cyrus came, became a strategic partner to the restoration of the temple and uh, uh, triggering the, the entire full-scale reconstruction of Israel. He was not a Jew, but uh, God caused him to come and partner and uh, he brought the resources that were needed and so forth. But the thing had to have custodians, uh, permanent, continuous and continuing custodians. And may God give you grace uh, to see what God is doing with your own life. God richly bless you. Uh, have a prosperous uh, day. For some of you, it's a prosperous night. Uh, others, it's a, it's a prosperous whatever morning. May God richly bless you. Let's reconnect this evening, uh, 8 p.m. Central African time. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 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 Amen.